Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the HPE ProLiant Micro Server Gen 10 Plus. And the Gen 10 Plus is actually a pretty big departure from what we saw in the original Gen 10 system. So we thought instead of just tearing the system down, we're gonna actually tear it down next to a older Gen 10 system so you can kind of see the difference between the two. We thought, hey, we have them both, why not just give it a shot? Because the HPE ProLiant Microserver Gen 10 Plus is actually a big departure. We actually have a socketed CPU, much like we saw in the beloved Microserver Gen 8 series. All right. Let's take a look at what's inside. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna notice is that the ProLiant Microserver Gen 10 Plus has a similar footprint, but it's about half the size of the Microserver Gen 10. And that should tell you a lot has changed and mostly for the better. The other key feature we wanted to point out is that the two USB type A ports on the front of both units with the new Microserver Gen 10 Plus, there's an upgrade of these to USB 3.2 Gen 2, which means that they're faster. On the rear of the unit, a whole lot has changed. Instead of one large and one small fan, we see a single medium-sized fan due to the new power supply, a 180-watt unit, and that thing has been moved to an external DC power brick, so it's no longer inside the chassis. The two NICs on the Gen 10 have been upgraded to four NICs in this generation, which is a big upgrade that we're gonna talk a lot about later. On the Gen 10, we also have two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports, but then on the Gen 10 Plus, they're all USB 3.2. You can see that the PCIe slots have moved from vertical to horizontal orientation. In the Micro Server Gen 10, there is a Bi8 and a Bi1 low profile slot combination. In the Gen 10 Plus, this is now a PCIe Gen 3 Bi16 slot on a riser. That riser also has a top slot for a dedicated ILO enablement kit. This ILO enablement kit is optional, but we actually have it installed here. Another change is that the Gen 10 using the AMD Opteron solution with integrated GPU had two display ports that were wired to the AMD SoC and could be used for things like digital signage or you know those types of applications. The VGA was kind of the management output, but with the Gen 10 Plus, both the VGA and the DisplayPort are really kind of more focused on management duties. They're not wired to the GPU on the Intel SoCs. The new ProLiant Microserver Gen 10 Plus still has four three and a half inch hard drive bays. You can also put two and a half inch drives in there. Now these bays utilize the same trailless mechanism and the same studs in between the two Gen 10, Gen 10 Plus generations. And the studs for each drive are actually still stored on the front of the chassis, which is a feature that we absolutely love because it means you don't lose them. They're always there and you always have a place for them, which is really nice. You can actually see them here in these shots. While the latching mechanism is the same between the two models, instead of one row of four vertical drives that the Gen 10 had, the Gen 10 Plus has a two by two configuration with horizontal drive. This is helping to keep the unit more compact and is the reason that it's a lot smaller. Previous micro server owners may notice that there's no optical drive bay in the new Gen 10 Plus. That optical bay was often used with an extra SSD. And while the Gen 10 had an extra fifth internal SATA port and Molex power connector, which could be used to add that extra SSD, the Gen 10 Plus does not have these features. We already gave feedback on this to the HP product management team and you know, I think we also have a solution that we can work around this and some of the other bits that we think people might wanna add. We're gonna go over that a little bit later on the STH main site. The other big change here is that by moving to an Intel-based solution, HPE can also use its S100i firmware and integration with its management tools instead of using that Marvell SATA RAID solution that was on the Gen 10. The S100i is still software RAID for those using VMware. That's probably not what you want, but however, it also means that one can use HPE's provisioning tools with the PCH-based RAID. One will notice that the Gen 10 Plus has an internal locking mechanism to help prevent unwanted removal of the front bezel, which helps keep drives safe, especially in SMB and robo situations where, you know, this may be just on someone's desk or out in a, somewhere that you just have to worry about somebody walking over and taking a drive. At least there is some level of security, and this is a feature that HP's had for some time. There are some NAS units that don't include a feature like this, so somebody could literally walk up to the NAS and actually go and pull a drive out. So this is actually something that 
that we like that HP is including across multiple generations. You'll also notice that the DIMM and expansion slots have swapped sides between the microserver Gen 10 and Gen 10 Plus. And you can also see how the density has increased significantly. This is a much more dense box than the Gen 10 was. We're showing the light on 180 watt power brick because while the Gen 10 Plus is about half the size of the previous Gen 10, it now has a substantial external power supply, which one needs to make space for. On these side shots, you can also see the cabling impact due to not using a standard ATX power supply. The Gen 10 has a big ATX power connector that the Gen 10 Plus simply doesn't need. At this point, you're probably gonna notice that we're actually not showing the actual teardown. And you know, these units only have say four to six screws, and we kind of watched the footage and we're like, okay, well, this is insanely boring footage. So we kind of edited that out. The microserver Gen 10 and Gen 10 Plus have similar yet slightly different trays and specifically motherboard trays due to the design of the units. While the Gen 10 Plus has an extra screw here, one can also remove the motherboard tray by removing only three cables on one side of the chassis where the Gen 10, there was actually cables on both sides of the chassis that needed to be removed. So in either case, it's pretty easy to get the motherboard out and to service, even for non-technical folks. But the Gen 10 Plus has a nice touch by adding some service labels. So you can actually see what you need to do. Now, service labels help those unfamiliar with the hardware perform maintenance in the field. We see these service stickers on HP's higher end Proliance. And we also see it from higher end server vendors. And it's a nice feature that the microserver Gen 10 does not have, and that you won't see also in a lot of lower end SMB servers and NAS units. Overall, this is a very small detail, but it is a case where the microserver Gen 10 Plus is evolving. Okay, looking at the motherboard side by side, we've already discussed the PCIe expansion slot change, as well as the removal of an extra SATA port with the Gen 10 Plus. What you'll also notice here is that the Gen 10 Plus motherboard is significantly denser because there's more going on. We wanted to point out a few key features. There's still a USB 2.0 type A internal port. We kind of wish this could have been a USB 3 port, but you know, this is the same between the two generations. One still gets two DDR4 ECC unbuffered DIMM slots. These have moved up in speed from DDR4 2400 to 2666 in this generation. So you get a little bit more memory bandwidth. The micro server Gen 10 Plus comes standard with eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of memory, but it can take two 16 gig ECC DIMMs for 32 gigs total. The Xeon E2200 series can take up to two DIMMs per channel for four DIMMs but in small form factors like this, the two dim solution is popular because it saves space and cost. One of the biggest changes is in networking. HP has moved away from the dual port Broadcom NetExtreme NIC in the Gen 10 and to an Intel based i350 AM4 NIC. This is a much higher one gig NIC that is supported by every major OS out of the box since it's basically you know one of the most popular NICs on mainstream rack mount servers. We like the fact that HPE did not go with a lower cost i340 here, nor did HPE use the lower cost Intel i210s. They went with the higher end solution, the i350 AM4. While network bandwidth has doubled and HPE is using a higher quality NIC, one will have to use the expansion slot if you wanna get 10 gig ethernet connectivity or anything just kind of faster. And since you actually have a PCIe by 16 slot in this generation, you could theoretically use even higher speed network adapters. Perhaps the most significant change with the Gen 10 Plus is that we now have ILO 5 included with some caveats. This is a big change because it requires not just the ILO 5 management controller, but also DRAM and flash memory on the motherboard to make it work. And that adds both cost and power consumption over the Gen 10 model. But it's also a huge feature. Standard on the unit, one gets a pretty minimal ILO 5 experience. And what we mean by that is all management is in band and it's basically inside the operating system, inside the, the system itself. It's not going on an out of band NIC or a shared NIC. That's the base solution. Instead, one needs to add an ILO enablement kit to the riser slot. Now this is an add-on that adds a dedicated NIC to the overall package. And HP is bundling the ILO enablement kit with an ILO essentials and ILO standard experience, which features things like, you know, having a remote console. You can upgrade this further to ILO advanced and get all the security features that the higher license level provides. And with ILO enablement, one can manage the server remotely. So if you have a server in a remote branch office, you can manage it just like you would a rack of ProLiance in the data center. And that, you know, is pretty cool. 
You also get features like HP InfoSight that you can use to manage the microserver Gen 10 Plus. And this is something that the Gen 10 just simply didn't have. We're gonna focus on this a lot more in our formal review, but we just kind of want to point out the very obvious hardware difference between the Gen 10 and Gen 10 Plus. On the topic of bombshells, one may have noticed the heatsink difference. The new microserver Gen 10 Plus has a much larger heatsink with copper heat pipes to aid in cooling. While the Gen 10 used an AMD Opteron SoC with up to a you know, 35 watt TDP, the new microserver Gen 10 Plus uses Intel CPUs with TDPs of up to 71 watts. On the topic of CPUs, we're gonna have benchmarks of the microserver with both the G5420 and the Xeon E2224, which is both of the launch models of CPUs that you can choose. But we're gonna say that, you know, hey, the performance is several times what we saw with the older microserver Gen 10. And this is just an absolutely huge upgrade. Speaking of upgrades, HP has brought back socketed processors with the Gen 10 Plus. That means one can potentially upgrade the CPUs, although the official spec sheet says that it's only up to 71 watts. That's something we're gonna test. For those who are thinking that they can use the Pentium G5420 model with an integrated GPU to drive display output, you're gonna be disappointed here. That requires OEMs to do some extra work and it's actually more costly work to support because Intel made some changes with this generation of server usage of the Xeon E2200 as well as the Pentium models. It's just actually on the server side, not on the workstation side. But because of that, the microserver Gen 10 Plus does not have that feature. So adding ILO 5 as well as significantly higher performance CPU options means that the power consumption and cost are up with this generation. We're gonna show the impacts of these in our review and compare them to the Opteron based Gen 10 systems. That review has so much going into it that it's taking a lot of time, but we wanted to show off some of the side-by-side -side hardware advances made on the new ProLiant Microserver Gen 10 Plus in the meantime. The Microserver Gen 10 was a pretty big departure from the Gen 8, but we think that the Gen 10 Plus is a lot closer to the spirit of the Gen 8 than the Gen 10 was. Overall, HPE did a great job with the new Microserver and we're pretty excited about it. Hey, while you're here, why don't you check out the STH main site, check out some of the other videos that we have on YouTube. Hey, why don't you even subscribe and turn on alerts so you can see the next time that we upload a new video. We hope that this has been a lot of fun for you. Can't wait for the full review, but in the meantime, have an awesome day.